today is the first day of bill filing for the 86th session. And so uh, we started this morning at 8 a.m. and we're excitedly filing the bills. This is the starting canon for, for the legislative session. This will, this will place uh, information in the public domain for people to have discussions. The press spends a lot of time studying these first bills because they're just kind of voraciously awaiting some new policy. But it's definitely the start of the session for us and things should accelerate here. I think we're excited and we're ready to see what happens next. Every session's different. A lot of the bills that you see filed on the first day are each member's idea of an attention getter, either a serious one, a not serious one, a controversial one, whatever it is. The last session there were about six, over 6,000 bills filed and about 1,200 made it to the governor's desk. So that's a lot of bills that actually become law, but that's also a ton of bills that are going to die. A lot of things take a long time and then just kind of come into fashion. So, you know, you see a bill filed year after year after year and it starts off as a fringe idea. You know, maybe one old retired hippie who's in the legislature files a, a legal marijuana bill. And it was like, nope, 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 okay. A couple of sessions ago, Texas legalized cannabis oil for a very narrow group of people with certain medical issues. There has been efforts since then to expand the list of medical issues that people could take the cannabis oil for. Uh, that is probably gonna get more attention this session. Hi, uh, Senator Menendez? Yep. Hi, this is Alana Roach at the Texas Tribune. You know, I was calling about the bills you filed this week regarding uh, medical cannabis and hemp. And I mean, is it just a matter of expanding on the CBD oil that was passed a couple of sessions ago, but for very limited use? I want to expand the existing bill to whatever the doctor feels that there's a need for. Wanted to see if we could come to the district and talk to you about filing those bills and just chat with you on camera about that. Sure, absolutely. Is the senator here? Not yet. Oh, okay. He should be on his way. Okay. Hey, all good. Good, good to, to see you. you. Doing all right? Yeah, how are good. you, Senator? So, you have a, a medical plant that, that no one has ever, you know, I, I don't know of yet one case that's been substantiated that has died of an overdose. No one has been proven to me that there is an addiction, addictive qualities. But yet, doctors can prescribe fentanyl, Dilaudid, which is the, almost has the same effects as heroin in terms of addiction, in terms of side effects. So that's what I don't understand. Rather than try to say, let's pass the best, you know, medicinal cannabis law out there, all I'm trying to say is let us expand. Because I understand after so many years in the legislature how hard it is for some legislators to, to try to, they, as, as soon as you say the words California, they, they flip out. I go, no, no, what I want to see is here a Texas version of medicinal cannabis that is just an expansion of our Compassionate Use Act that lets doctors and patients make the decisions. That's it, simple. What do you say to those that are kind of slippery slope? I say that we're the legislators and the slope stops wherever we want it to stop. The idea of Texas abstaining from daylight savings time has been uh, has come up a few times in the past. It never goes anywhere. I think part of it is just because it would be so complicated to figure out the impact. Right in this period between the election and the beginning of the session, we go through the bumpy part of daylight savings time. So when it comes to bill filing time, everybody's still ticked off about having to get up an hour earlier, get up an hour later. I think Lyle Larson's one of those members that's going to file that every session and hope that at some point he gets the momentum behind him to get it taken seriously. I'd be surprised if that moves like in a serious direction, um, but um, I think there's a growing number of people who hate daylight savings time. Yes, it's definitely annoying. I don't know, I think it's kind of stupid. I mean, I think it's a problem. Well, I like it because, you know, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm an early bird. Yo aprobaría el mantener el horario, el cambio de horario. It throws everybody's schedule off and I don't like it. <laughs> well, I believe it served its, pur its purpose in the beginning, but now I think it's irrelevant. I know that I understand why they did it a long time ago for the farmers. A lot of people think that farmers made it up, but uh, they actually didn't. 
I have no idea, but that's just a, a common misconception. I, I am in uh, favor of the bill eliminating daylight savings. Let's get back to our natural cycle. If it has to be done through law, then I would support that law. The sun is the clock, not the clock that the men built on the wall. You understand? That's my position. You know, the Texas system has a peculiarity. They only meet for 20 weeks, once every two years, 140 days. And so they come in and it's all very compressed and it all happens in a hurry. And that was kind of baked into the design. The House is going to be more divided than it has been in about a decade. Democrats won a dozen seats. There's definitely new conversations happening after the election day that maybe Texas is closer to purple than many people realized. And so you are going to probably see lawmakers thinking more carefully about how certain votes impact the next election. We come in on January 8th, we swear in the House, we swear in the Senate, and we're off to the races.